By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against Yurian, who is an... Uh, yeah, who is a pretty experienced X-Points player, you could say. I believe he won X-Points once as well. And um, he's now brought a pretty fierce deck to the table. It is a burn deck. So, I mean, I'm not sure if I'm going to enjoy playing against this. It's blue and red, full of burn. It also has... No, it doesn't have counter spells. I wanted to say it also has some counter magic, but it doesn't. It's just full of burn. Well, before I uh, show you the deck photo, let me first tell you a little bit about my deck. I am playing with a mono red deck, so you may think he's playing burn as well. Not really. I am playing a completely foreign black border deck. It's been on uh, the channel before. I've called it Flying Circus because it's got um, uh, a flying carpet in there. That's one of the cards. And there's just a lot of shenanigans going on with my deck. It's uh, I got big plans with this deck, big dreams, but I'm probably going to be dead due to burn before uh, I can get everything all my pieces assembled. Anyway, uh, before I start with the deck decks, because I've got beautiful deck photos of both of these decks, I would first like to point out that we are playing this match according to the X-Points rules. So X-Points is basically Atlantic old school, and then you've got 10 points that you can spend on cards with points on them. So here you see the current overview. So you kind of got to choose. You cannot spend more than 10 points or else your deck is illegal. Uh, the deck that I'm actually playing with is not necessarily an X-Points deck. I mean, it doesn't hit the 10 points, but I've never made it with X points in my mind, but it's just a deck that I love to play. And that's why I brought it to the table for this match against uh, Yurian. Now, um, I guess it's time to jump into the uh, the deck photos, but there's just one little thing that I like to mention, as I always do, is if you want to skip the deck deck section, the easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below, because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. If you click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And then, of course, afterwards, you can always decide to go and check the deck photos. And you can also do that by using the timestamps. I've given specific timestamps to each deck tech section of this video okay now that that is out of the way and you are fully informed i'm going to start with the deck text i'm going to start with the deck of my opponent yurian let's take a look at his burn list and here we see the deck of yurian so nethers to the face i guess is the actual name i've just called it burn yurian because this is like i know your nickname by the way is nether shadows that's why it's probably called nethers to the face but uh, man, there is so much burn in here. Look at that list. Of course, because you're playing Atlantic, you've got access to Fallen Empires, meaning you can play with the AO, AO piles in here as well. So it's even more burn. You play with, you know, four Psionic Blasts, four Mind Bombs, four Chains, four Bolts. And then look at that, four Fireballs and four Disintegrates. I love that one fork in there, by the way. I think it's really cool. You also play with Pyrotechnics. I mean, this is insane. Your only creatures are the four Mishra's factories. And what I find interesting about this deck is that you're not playing with, for example, Mana Flare. I think Mana Flare could really be good in this deck. Then again, it's not a burn card, so it's not dealing damage. But Mana Flare, of course, is really good next to your four Disintegrates and four Fireballs. What I like about your deck, and I think that's something that you said as well, you just wanted to give this a try. What will happen if... Because I remember, like, back in the day when I was a young Tim, you had a lot of burn decks. And even at my LGS, we had a rule that you could not play burn to the face. Because it just led to so many, you know, short and kind of one-sided games. You know, the burn started from turn one. It didn't stop. You have to understand that at that time when I was playing as a little Tim, my understanding of the game was very limited. So... I, I just lost against Burn all the time because I just wanted to play a lot of artifacts and enchantments and kind of put stuff on the board and have a little army. And for me, it was almost war, more like Warhammer where you kind of build up a really nice looking board state. It was more like making a nice little picture instead of, oh yeah, I'm also playing against an opponent. And of course, when you're playing against Burn, you don't want to make anything. You just want to hurt your opponent every single turn. Uh, what I like, by the way, in this in this deck are the three Howling Mines. I think it's really cool. And I actually think it's pretty good in this deck because you're going to run out of fuel very, very quickly. And so you can just keep slinging your spells towards my face. Now, I am playing with a Mirror Universe. So maybe if I time it right, I can use the Mirror Universe and then I can kill you because I do play with a little bit of burn and I also have some tricks up my sleeve. Let's take a look at my deck, The Flying Circus. 
And here we see my deck. So I've called this deck Flying Circus because it's all built around um, Gravity Sphere. Gravity Sphere is an enchant world from Legends that simply says everything loses flying. So you cannot get flying, all your flyers lose flying, it's the end of the road. But there is something in the rules of magic which is called timestamps, right? So at the beginning of your turn, everything loses flying, but then you can give your creatures flying again. And then I'm thinking about flying carpet. Flying carpet is just this beautiful artifact. I love the art. I mean, it's it's Aladdin, it's fairy tale, it's a thousand and one Arabian Nights, right? I love the art. I just love the card. And what this artifact does, it simply gives target creature flying. So even though you have the gravity sphere on the board, you can still give your creatures flying and then they actually fly. So what I want to do is I want to put my earth elemental or my fire elemental, but preferably my earth elemental because he's such a fat boy on the carpet and then attack with it. And remember, because I have a gravity sphere out, my opponent doesn't have any flying creatures anymore. So in theory, it's unblockable. Now I know you've got, of course, your creature removal, you've got your mazes of if and that stuff, but I'm just gonna ignore that for now. We're just gonna pretend that's not there, right? You wanna stop a creature with a creature. With this combo, that's not gonna happen. Flying carpet, gravity sphere. Now I have some other tricks here up my sleeve as well because I'm also playing with Sword of the Ages. Now Sword of the Ages is this artifact from Legends for six to cast. And what it what you can do is you can, comes into play tapped, I believe, but you can, Tap it and sacrifice it, and then sack an X target creatures that you control, and then you can deal damage to any target equal to the power of all those creatures combined. Now, I really love combining Sword of the Ages with Wall of Fire, because Wall of Fire, of course, one red, give it plus one, plus O. Oh. So Wall of Fire is kind of turned into this crazy fireball, right? This indirect Wall of Fire fireball because of Sword of the Ages. So that's kind of my plan B here to win the game. Another plan B to win the game, I guess that's then plan C, is the Mirror Universe in this deck. So Mirror Universe, absolutely epic artifact, right? At six to cast and during your upkeep, you can sack it and you can change life totals. So I can, if I'm really low, because you know, Yurian's gonna burn me very, very hard. We just saw his deck, it's insane. I can use my Mirror Universe in the upkeep change life so maybe then all of a sudden Yurian is on like two and I'm on the 20 of Yurian and I can I can easily burn him out because I am playing with a little bit of burn I think I've got some uh, pyrotechnics in there somewhere uh, is, is it called pyrotechnics I always get the name confused but you, you know which one I mean one from legends deals four damage you can divide it any way you choose I believe it's somewhere here in the deck another really nice card I have in this deck that that goes together really well with uh, uh, gravity sphere is all about us carpet it's another card from legends that looks like it's it's from Arabian Nights I mean look at the art uh, but you can use it and then you cannot um, all the damage dealt by creatures non-flying creatures is reduced to zero because you're safe on a flying carpet so again the name you know the flying carpet flying circus I mean it's just fun. I mean, I, I, I hope when you see this deck photo, you understand why I enjoy playing this deck so much. In all honesty, it doesn't win a lot, but it's not that bad either. You know, if you play it against other tier three, tier two decks, maybe, and you're kind of lucky, it's pretty good. And it's really good against creature decks because it, you know, it has a lot of weapons to stop them. I'm playing like two mazes of if, I'm playing, you know, Mishra's Factories, I'm playing Wall of Fires. So, you know, I, I, I got a lot of stuff to kind of stop creatures on the ground. And then when they give me enough time, I can usually win the game, you know, because of my, my flying carpet or because of my Sword of the Ages or because of my Mirror Universe. So, you know, th there are ways that this deck can win. It's not like I'm, I'm guaranteed going to lose, but I think in this matchup against Yurian, I mean, his deck is probably going to go too fast for me. But I'm hoping to get into a situation where I force Yurian to use his direct damage to kill my big creatures. That would be fantastic. If he starts to do that, then I know I, I got a chance of winning it. If, if he keeps throwing the burn at my face, yeah. I mean, the only way that I can win in that scenario is if I find a mirror universe. And I'm only playing with one mirror. So the chance is not pretty high. So for me, Yurian's burn is a favorite, but... Like I said, I can see scenarios where I can take him. Okay, enough talk, enough looking at deck photos. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So we've got my opponent, Yurian, aka Nether Shadow, on the left. He is on the play here, starting with a Mind Bomb. So he's playing Blue Red Burn. It's a ruthless deck full of burn. So obviously, I'm just going to take the full damage here from the Mind Bomb. Mind Bomb, a sorcery from, uh, from Blue, originally from the Dark. 
that can deal three points of damage, but you can discard a card uh, to prevent one point of damage. So you can discard three cards in theory and then you would gain uh, get no damage. Ooh, there's a strip mine as well from Nether Shadow. What a great start for him. Uh, but yeah, of course, so early in the game, you're going to take the damage. You're not going to discard any uh, cards to the Mind Bomb. Anyway, taking on my second turn, playing a Mountain. I'm playing a deck called Flying Circus. It's Mono Red. It's not Burn, even though you might suspect that when it's Mono Red. But I'm actually uh, playing a deck that's built around the card Gravity Sphere. But for now, I'm just trying to uh, yeah not take too much damage. It looks like I'm just playing a Mountain and Go, I guess. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Seven cards in hand. It seems five cards in hand for my opponent here, Yurian. Let's see what he can do. Can he find a red source? Yes, he can. I'm predicting more damage. There is, okay, a Relic Barrier. So Relic Barrier, a card from Legends that you can tap to tap down target artifact. That's not too scary. Tapping two red, maybe a Felwer Stone here. Yep, playing a Felwer. So that's kind of annoying because he can tap my Felwer Stone in upkeep with his uh, Relic Barrier. And then I won't get the Mana Ramp. There is a Desert. I don't think the Desert is going to be very relevant in this uh, match. But of course, Desert is really good when you play against Weenie decks. So here we can see Yurian tapping down my Felwer Stone in my upkeep. So that's a good play. In response, I'm going to play a Shatter on the uh, Relic Barrier. And then I'm going to draw my card for turn. I think that's a good decision because, you know, Relic Barry is going to keep holding me back. And I want to try to ramp up. I want to try to go a little bit faster, get like a Fire Elemental or Earth Elemental out early. You know, force Yurian here to kind of use his direct damage on my creatures. But there we see a Psionic Blast by Yurian, by the way. Four points of damage for me. So I'm going to drop to 13. And of course, Yurian is also going to take two points of damage from his own Psionic Blast. But I mean, this is the problem playing against burn decks like this. I mean, I'm already on 13. I haven't done anything. And he did it in his end step. So he can just untap and burn me again. Okay, there's a Howling Mine. So that's good. So perhaps I should have kept my Shatter here. But of course, you know, when we start playing, we don't know each other's decks, obviously. But maybe I was a little bit too fast with my shatter uh, shatter because a shatter here on the howling mine would have been really nice I get to draw two cards Yurian gets to draw you know zero extra cards from the mine and here I go so I'm probably targeting his mountain because of all the burn there's a bolt though in response oh I'm targeting the island probably because of uh, because I'm afraid of counter magic interesting here so a fisher on the island he's found a new island though there's a chain lighting and I'm tapped out, so I cannot send the chain back, unfortunately. Look at my life total. I'm on seven. The good thing for me, though, is because I'm probably going to lose this first game, but I'm getting a lot of information. I really have a good idea of what his deck wants to do, and Yurian doesn't really have any information on my deck. So I'm also asking about what's in his graveyard. So he's got Mind Bomb, Chain Lightning, Lightning Bolt, Psionic Blast. So for me, that's kind of painting the picture. I also know that he is playing with a, with a Howling Mind, so that's good information as well. And of course, his deck, you know, Relic Berry, Howling Mind, that's a great combo. I kind of missed that in the deck deck, by the way, but that's a great combination. Of course, you can use your Relic Barrier to turn off your Howling Mind, and then you get to draw two cards, and your opponent, because the Howling Mind is then tapped, only gets to draw the normal one card. Anyway, taking on my turn, I'm on seven. Maze of If, not very useful against the deck of Yurian. Tapping four here. What am I going to do? Oh, five. Expecting to see an Elemental here. I'm tapping again, though, changing my mind. I wonder what options I have. Playing a Felwer Stone. Okay, I want to play a Felwer Stone first and then. Okay, that makes sense. So playing out an Earth Elemental. Four cards in hand. There's a Psionic Blast, though. So I'm going to drop to three. Oh, I'm as good as dead. I mean, I'm toast. Also, he gets to draw two cards. So even if he doesn't have Burn in hand, he's got a double chance of hitting Burn here from the top of his deck. Here we go. Yeah, disintegrate for the win. So game number one going to Yurian very, very quickly. But like I said, I now have information. I know what he wants to do. I can sideboard accordingly. You know, I've got Red Elemental Blast in the sideboard to stop the Psionic Blast and uh, stop the Mind Bomb. So, you know, I think I've got a better chance at this in game number two. Let's shuffle up and let's go to game two.
Game number two, here we go. So I'm on the play, I know what he wants to do. I've had a chance to sideboard. I mean, I'm still scared, but I think I got a better chance. Starting with the Mishra's Factory, passing to turn seven cards in hand. Well, six actually, exactly six. And passing here to Nether Shadow, AKA Yurian. I'm expecting a bolt here, turn one, or Chain Lightning, or Mind Bomb. I think Mind Bomb is probably just the best way to open, right? Because maybe later in the game you can like drop a land or something, prevent the damage. Yeah, there we go. Chain Lightning to the face, or to the dome, as he used to say. Going to 17, drawing a card for turn, attacking for two. Okay, going aggro style on the burn player. I mean, he was tapped out, so he kind of gave me an opener there. Because I think I wouldn't have done it if he had an untapped mountain. There's an AO pile. So that's a little bit of a problem. You can use the AO pile, of course, when I animate the factory. For now, though, I kind of get a free attack. Although, I probably also want to block the factory. Do I? I guess I don't. Or, or do I care? I wonder. Perhaps I've got a shatter in hand. That's another reason. Actually taking it back. Playing a strip mine instead. Yeah, stripping the factory. I think that's a good decision because you, maybe you're wondering why not strip the mountain. I'm just assuming he's got another mountain in hand and the factory can deal damage and it's basically like a mini lightning bolt every time he hurts me. So I, I just want to try to make sure that I don't take more damage than absolutely necessary. There's a howling mine. Okay, so again, not too bad. Hopefully I've got a shatter here and I can shatter or the Howling Mine, or the Ao Pile. There's a Mountain. Okay, I guess I'm just gonna attack here. And I'm gonna hit him for three. It's gonna put him on 13. Okay, so there's, you know, I mean, look at his life total. He's lower than me. I'm putting some pressure on. For now, at least he's unable to deal with the, uh, with the factories, but I think now it's gonna be easier for him to keep a mana untapped to use his Ao Pile to respond to an animation. Then again, I can respond by pumping my own factory. So it's, it's, it's kind of interesting to see what's going to happen here. Another desert now that is starting to get problematic now. So it's going to be really tough for me to, to hurt him with the factories. But at least I've already dealt seven damage with the factories. Tapping four here. I wonder what can I cast? Oh yeah, clay statue. So he can kill the clay statue now for the AO pile. But in a way, that's actually what I hope that he's going to do because... That means two more damage directed at creatures and not directed at me. If he's going to choose not to kill it, also fine. I can untap and regenerate it later in the game. So we're just going to see. Obviously, Clay Statue is not great against the deserts here on the side of Yurian. A little advantage, though, is that desert only deals the damage after Yurian has taken the damage from my creature. So that's at least something. But let's see what he can do. Finds an island. Four mana for him now. Probably going to play some more burn. Oh, he is going to use the AO pile. Okay, I was hoping for this scenario. I know it sounds weird, but I was. There's another AO pile, though. That is unfortunate. That AO piles are kind of holding my factories hostage, especially in combination with the deserts. Okay, I've got five mana now. Okay, playing an earth elemental. That's four, five. I mean, that's tough to kill. The five toughness really is something you shouldn't underestimate, and it's why I personally find the earth elemental better then the fire elemental. Yes, the fire elemental has extra power, so that's usually better. But I feel in old school, I really dig the five toughness. Anyway, let's take a look at what Yurian can do. You're drawing two again, of course, playing a mountain. And I wonder if he's going to use like direct damage to get rid of the, uh, of the earth elemental. That would be kind of sweet. Maybe even two cards. Maybe use like his AO pile in combination with a bolt or a chain lightning. He's, he is in the tank, which is a good sign. Tapping. What is he going to do? Tapping five, playing a fireball on my life total, though. That is unfortunate. So he's going to put me on 13, but he is tapped out. So I can attack with both factories and with Earth Elemental, dealing eight points of damage. I mean, that would be fantastic, right? Tapping two, playing a Shatter on the Howling Mine. Interesting. Could have gone for the AO Pile as well. Would have been a good target also. 
Then again, I'm on 13, so I mean, I don't want Yurian to draw more cards. So attacking him for eight, putting him on five. I am hopeful here. This is game number two. Lost the first game. If I can win this, we're going to go to a game three to see who gets to win this match. Five cards in hand, it seems, for my opponent here. Seven in my hand. Double chain. Ooh, oh, he's going to go for it. This is great news for me. Well, not great because I could have won if, it's, if it stayed on the table, but... This is a good sign for me. If you start using his direct damage uh, for my creatures, that's fantastic. So two chain lightnings to kill one earth elemental. That's not too shabby. Still has that AO pile though, making it kind of tough for me to attack with my factories. Hopefully I've got another elemental. Okay, there's a fire elemental. Fire elemental, five power. So that's one hit from the fire elemental and he is a goner. I've won game number two, six cards in hand. Not there yet, of course. Remember, Psionic Blast deals four damage, so that is a perfect card against the fire uh, against the fire elemental. Oh, is he gonna do it? He's thinking about it. Is that what he wants to do in his end step? I mean, he's on five, right? I think if he had the Psionic Blast, he already would have done it. I think he's he's contemplating another play. Maybe we're discussing how it works with deserts. So he can use his AO pile in combination with the deserts to kill the fire elemental, but he can only do that if I attack with the fire elemental and he can only deal damage with the deserts after he's taken the damage from the creature. So then he's already dead. So using AO pile and desert here to try to kill my fire elemental is not wise. He needs to find another way. I mean, his hand still is pretty full. Remember, uh, you know, he's got so many burn spells. Hopefully he only has land or mind bombs or something. Looks like he's going to tap four. Are we going to see a fireball here? Yeah, disintegrate, kind of the same idea. So disintegrate here on the fire elemental. So that's going to kill her. So at least, I mean, I can attack here now with both factories. Then he can kill a factory with an AO pile. Okay, so I'm going to activate a factory and I'm going to attack. So the reason that I do this, this is if Yurian is going to use his AO pile, I can in response pump it with the other factory so it's not going to die. So actually he just has to take the damage, but if then I pump it with my factory in response, Yurian can kill it. So he's going to go to three and I cannot pump it up, unfortunately, but he's on three. Wall of Fire! Oh, I was kind of hoping for a burn spell! No pyrotechnics from my side of the board. Unfortunately though. And I mean he's still on three, he is still alive! Oh, what a nail biter of a match. I'm so close, but I, I can see this going completely wrong, you know? I mean, 13 against the burn deck is not that much life. Okay, he's passing the turn. That's fantastic. I think I should again just attack with one. Okay, there's a Shatter on the AO pile. This is great. This is fantastic. So now he's got to use it main phase because my factories are not animated, right? So he's going to deal two damage to me, put me on 11, who cares? So now I'm going to animate both my factories. Remember, Desert only deals damage after you've taken damage. Oh, look at how conservative I am. I'm just attacking with one and pumping it up. I think it's better to just attack with both. There's a Psionic Blast, exactly. I should have attacked with both here. Oh, Red Elemental Blast. Oh, and this is giving me to win the Red Elemental Blast from the sideboard, protecting me from the Psionic Blast. I love this. And it's a signed Red Elemental Blast, by the way. Anyway, great to see. Um, but it's just game number two. It's 1-1. One, one. So let's go to game three. Game number three. Here we go. So Union on the play here. After losing game two, starting with the Mind Bomb. Ooh, that reminds me of game one. That game he won. Dropping to 17 here. Drawing my card for turn. There is a factory. Hopefully I can find my mirror universe. That would be so awesome. Another blue. There's an AO pile and a pass. So again, I have a little opener to attack with my factory. Remember in game two where I played pretty aggressive, it worked out quite nice for me. 
So attacking him here. For some reason, he's gonna... Oh, of course, he takes damage from his own Mind Bomb as well, of course. He's dropping to 15 here. I was like, where did he get the damage from? But Mind Bomb works, you know, on both players. Passing the turn, missing a land drop. This is interesting. Now, of course, I'm not going to attack because of the AO pile, just passing the turn here. No uh, Felwer Stone for me, unfortunately. And look at this, using a Shatter on end step. Interesting. I guess if I would have used it in my own turn, I couldn't have animated the factory. And now at least I had some more information waiting to see if maybe he would cast, for example, like a Howling Mine or another artifact. Playing another Mountain and attacking him for two. So... He's now on 13. It's actually looking pretty okay for the simple reason that Yurian cannot find any of his burn. So that's kind of nice. Tapping 5 here. That's, uh, that's an Hammerheim, by the way, that land from Legends. Playing an Earth Elemental. Wow, I mean, it's looking really good. He's on 13. Finally, he's found a land, so that's something for him. Hopefully, he can do something with it. Well, for Yurian, that is, hopefully. I mean, three lands is not really going to help him that much. I mean, he could, of course, play a Chain or a Bolt on the Earth Elemental in combination with the AO Pilot who could kill the Earth Elemental, which is an okay play, I guess, but it's it doesn't really worry me because then he uses two cards. And again, then he's using Burn on the Earth Elemental and not on my life total. And we've seen in game two, as soon as he starts doing that, I, I'm in a really good position to actually win the game as long as I can, you know, keep drawing into threats. I think, for example, in this matchup, Wall of Fire is like really, really bad because, you know, Yurian only has his, his factories that he wants to attack with. Anyway, Yurian really being in the tank here, he probably doesn't want to spend two cards on the Earth Elemental, but, you know, maybe he's forced to because, I mean, he's on 13. If I attack him for four, he's going to drop to nine. Maybe I find another Elemental. I mean, this is tough for him. You can see him tapping with the cards. He's really trying to find a way out. But it's tough, you know. He's missed, like, what, two land drops in total. That's really setting him back. Maybe even three land drops now that I think about it. Six cards in hand still. What is he going to do? He's just passing the turn. Okay, this is pretty good. I mean, maybe it means he's got lightning bolt, whatever, but I'm happy with it. I'm going to just attack and, and see what he does, I guess. Playing another mountain, so I've got a lot of lands. I can't complain. Question is, do I have something useful in my hand? Attacking with the Earth Elemental first, just to see what my opponent is going to do. Are we going to see a Lightning Bolt? Ao Pile and a Bolt, exactly. So he's going to kill the Earth Elemental here. I mean, I'm wondering if perhaps I should have attacked also with the Factory. Then again, it also it, it depends on my follow-up play. I don't have a follow-up play. I think in that case, I should have attacked with the Factory as well and kind of forcing my opponent to choose between... Or, you know, doing the, the thing that feels good, which is AO Pile on the, uh, the factory, or go for the two for one. Anyway, attacking now with the factory. I mean, if it would have then gone for the factory here, there we see a bolt. So I could have dealt, you know, two more points of damage, at least extra the last turn. That was a bit of a misplay, in my opinion. Ooh, there's Aladdin. That is funny. Aladdin, not really good against, uh, against the deck of Yurian here. So Aladdin uh, can steal artifacts. Problem is it's also a 1-1, so it's easy to kill a card from Arabian Nights. Oh, a Wheel of Fortune. That is very sweet. Oh, no, Mirror Universe. Oh, no. Also a cool hand by Yurian, by the way, with that fork. That is really sweet. But I think Yurian really wants to get Lance, so I think it's a good play for him. And I, I kind of feel the game is now moving more towards Yurian's direction. He's got rid of my Earth Elemental. He's, you know, he destroyed my, um, my Mishra's factory, so that's all good for him. He's now playing out a mountain in a pass. And we both have an equal amount of cards. Well, he's got six, now I have six, uh, or seven in hand, actually, after draw. Hopefully, I was able to find something useful. There's a Felwer Stone. Not really impressed with that. 
Tapping four. Okay, clay statue. That's good. I also have the mana to regenerate it. I can attack with Aladdin here. Attack him for one. I should do that, right? Exactly. Attack him with Aladdin. Still pointing at the Mirror Universe. I mean, it's just so bad that I lost the Mirror Universe. It's so good against Yurian. But then again, I mean, he's, he's lower than my life. And next turn, I can start attacking with the Clay Statue. That would be really sweet. So there's a Strip Mine here by Yurian. So one of the things he can do is he can strip a land, but then in response, I can put a Regeneration Shield on my statue. There we go. Fireball to the Dome. So Fireball for four. I'm dropping from 15 to 11. This is what uh, Yurian, of course, wants to do. Just use his direct damage and point it directly at me, not at my creatures. There's an attack for four now. So I'm going to put Yurian on eight. Oh, I'm really close. I'm really close. Hopefully I can put some more pressure on the board. Okay, there's a Jam Day Tome. That Jam Day Tome is a little bit tricky. If I look at my mana, I've got five mana open, so I can use four to feed it to the book, but then I can no longer regenerate my clay statue, so that's kind of risky. There's a desert. Ooh, that desert's actually quite good. I should say annoying for me. He's tapping everything. Another X spell. Oh, man, an X spell for five. I'm going to drop to six. I'm so close. I mean, he's doing this because he's got a lot of burn in hand. That's why he's doing this. That's why he's not pointing it at my creatures. I feel like I have to kill Yurian this turn or else I'm toast. And that is a big problem for me because I don't have a lot of burn myself. I mean, I can hit him for four, put him on four, and that feels really good, but I'm on six, and I, I don't think I'm going to get another turn. I probably should use the book first before attacking here, to be honest, just to, to give me some more information. So second main, drawing a card. Hopefully I've got like a red elemental blast, and he's got a side blast in hand to finish me off, something like that. There's a fissure. Okay, so this is got, kind of going to protect me a little bit from X spells, so I'm taking care of the desert. So I'm doing this that then, you know, if he has an X spell, you know, it, 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 it's if he drops a land and then a fireball, I'm dead. But with the Fisher, I can take care of one of the lands and he doesn't have enough lands to kill me. Going for the desert. I think that's not a good decision. Yes, desert is annoying, but maybe I should have gone for the red source because then he cannot play out two burn spells. Like chain lightning, lightning bolt. There's a chain lightning. There's a lightning bolt. Exactly. So I should have gone for... Okay, I also had a psionic blast. Did I have a red elemental blast, though? No, I did not. I did not. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, so close, though. Oh, man. I kind of feel... Remember those, those, those two points of damage, for example, that I missed. I should have attacked with Earth Elemental and Factory, maybe then. At least I could have dealt two extra points of damage. It's... Oh, with these matches... Because that makes a difference, right? Because then when he plays, then he can no longer play Psyonic Blast. If he then plays out of Chain Lightning, I can send it back and kill him. Um, although I take the damage first, so that doesn't work. Anyway, very, very close. I, I feel like we both played really well, Yurian. I, I don't see any mistakes from our parts. Uh, some things we could have done differently, but it's always the case looking back at these matches. Anyway, thank you very much for this game. I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you, Yurian, for coming onto the channel and if you enjoy x points and you would like to know more about x points check out the description below for a link to their community on facebook you can join them for free and uh, they have monthly tournaments it's really nice and if you like my channel and if you want to support me as a content creator please take a moment to visit patreon.com slash timmy talks and read all about how you can support me it already starts with just one dollar a month and for that dollar you get access to the timmy talks discord and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll.
Let us think it is somber, Kazik. 